The fact that you clicked on this video, I'm sure you're well aware of Tanzu Kubernetes Grid or TKG. If you aren't, in a nutshell, TKG is effectively an upstream compatible Kubernetes that is signed and supported by VMware. It is also shipped together with the latest vSphere 7. But more importantly, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy a TKG on vSphere and get started on Kubernetes with limited to no knowledge of Kubernetes. If you're like me, somebody who has spent a large part of their career meddling with infrastructures and VM, Kubernetes and containers will require some additional effort to get up to speed with, and the Kubernetes landscape is you know, perpetually maturing, but as it is today, it still requires quite a bit of know-how to set up a cluster and also learn. TKG or Tanzu Kubernetes Grid solution from VMware is supposed to solve that issue and make KS provisioning as simple as how we provision VM environments today. So today's video, I will show you how to prep your client with the prerequisites and then jump straight into to demonstrate how simple it is to set up TKG. Also, as always, please subscribe if you like the content and leave your thoughts in the comment if you have any. I've left all the necessary links below to get you guys started as well. So before you start, you need to prep your laptop or the terminal you're working on. First, you need to download the TKG CLI. It comes in flavors on Mac, Windows and Linux, so it's up to you. And you need to then download two OVAs. The first OVA is the Load Balancer and also the Photon V3 Kubernetes OVA. There's some additional uh, optional tools at the bottom that you could look at, but uh, for now, we'll just leave it as it is. You may or may not have uh, Docker installed on your terminal. If you haven't, you would need to do that. Uh, there's a flavor for Mac, which I'm running, and you will also need to install kubectl. These are all fairly straightforward, um, really just next, next, next. So let's jump into vSphere now. We will need to load both the OVAs into vSphere. So just selecting the OVAs here. I've pretty much left everything as default and just step through the process. Go next, accept. Pick the data store that you want. The relevant networks. Once it's successfully loaded, uh, we will do the same for the other OVA. Uh, for everybody's sanity, I will just fast forward this. So when both the OVAs have been loaded, what we need to do next is convert both of these into templates. So it's fairly straightforward again, just right click and select template to convert. And once that's done, we are all set. As part of the setup, we will need a SSH key pair. So in order to get some of those generated, here's the command lines. I'll leave the links to this um, instruction set here to make it easy. It will definitely come in handy when you set it up. So we'll bring up a console and we'll punch in TKG in it, dash dash UI. That will bring us to the TKG setup UI. The UI will prompt you for vCenter address, the credentials, as well as the SSH public key that we generated earlier. Punch those in and go next. Next, you'll be given the option of deploying a development environment or production. In this case, we have gone with a small production environment. You can put in the name of the class if you want. And that's where we also select the load balancer template that we created earlier. Then we go next. Select the resources that we want to use where we want to put it, go next, select the network. Then we pick the other template that we loaded up, go next and review. So pretty much that's it. Once you're ready, click deploy and you can go grab yourself a cup of coffee. You can track progress through vCenter as the VMs come up or through that initial setup screen. Once it's complete, uh, the screen will show that green bar on top say installation complete. You can actually see it's fairly quick. In my cluster, it took about 12 minutes. You can also validate the successful deployment through vCenter. You will see the control plane and uh, also the load balances being deployed. Next, let's deploy our first cluster. So we will run the command tkg create cluster. With this cluster, I've gone with plan equals dev. You have uh, options between dev and prod. With dev, you get one control plane, one load balancer and one worker node. And with prod, you get three control plane VMs, one load balancer and three worker nodes. You can also create a custom plan depending on your requirements, but essentially what it's doing, it's creating the whole bunch of VMs uh, based on whatever we just mentioned. So it may take a little while. 
So once it's complete, it will show you that the roller cluster is now complete. You can then go into vCenter to validate that you got all those three VMs. You can also check the status of the cluster through command line. With that, let's look at deploying our first workload. I've got a very simple YAML file to deploy two instances of Nginx. Let's validate that. And there you go, the two instances of Nginx. With that, this concludes my demo with TKG. So what do you guys think? I previously set up a few Kubernetes clusters from scratch and it always involves pulling packages from everywhere, a bunch of CLIs and etc. TKG really makes it seem so simple. Not quite one click, but close. I hope you have found some value in the video and if you have any questions or queries, do drop me a comment and I'll try my best to answer them. As always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.